In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. In today's second reading, St. Paul proclaims that we are to owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the times we have chosen hate or indifference over love, let us ask God for mercy and pardon. Lord Jesus, you are love incarnate. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to show us the way to salvation. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are present when we gather in your name. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way. The wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. 
For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The Word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, Take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Twenty-two years ago, tomorrow, September 11th, brought our country to our knees. We know the destruction that happened on 9-11-01. It was a major conflict. And in that conflict, how the whole nation turned toward patriotism and turned toward God. Churches were filled. There was conflict. We're seeking some answers. Today's gospel teaches us about how to handle conflict. And as Jesus said, there are three stages here. First, if, if, there's, if there's someone sins against you, go to that person between you and him alone, out of love, out of love. If he wins, if he listens to you, you win. If not, then maybe take some others that know the facts, not the rumors, not the gossip, but the facts, you know, so that the truth can be established. And then if he doesn't do that, then take it to the church, all out of love, so that, so that there may be uh, listening there, the last try. And then he says something that's kind of odd for us. You know, if, if he doesn't listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. He's showing how in that time, you know, how the, the Jews did not associate at all with tax collectors. So, so stay away from them, he said then, out of love. Huh? You know, if there's not going to be any resolution, then we have to make sure that we don't continue the fight, but stay away then. So he's not telling them to be rude to them and ignore them, but just because there is no reconciliation, 
to stay away. But then he goes on, the bottom line that, you know, that love must win out. We heard that, you know, in, the, in their second reading today, right, from Paul's letter to the Romans. He says, love is the fulfillment of the law. That those who keep the law, the result is a heart of love. Those who keep the law of the Lord by loving their neighbor, and as Jesus would even tell us, loving our enemies. So remember when we, when we commemorate that event of 22 years ago in our country, you know, how we were brought to our knees and how we too were challenged, even in the midst of such destruction. Where are we in the mode of forgiveness? Where are we in the mode of love? You know, nowhere in the gospel does it tell us that we should proclaim someone else's faults. That's not what we're about, you know, but we are about how do we let the love win out? See, Maximine Colby, he did that in the death camp in Auschwitz when he was in the, in the starvation bunker. And one of the sayings that St. Maximilian Colby was a very uh, um, famous for is love alone creates. Hatred destroys. Anger makes division. But love alone creates. October 14th, 1941, when he finally died after an injection of carbolic acid in that starvation bunker, proclaiming God's love, even for those who were persecuting him. So it's a challenging gospel today, challenging for us that we may see that love, love is the answer. As Paul says, love is the fulfillment of the law. Why? Because God is love. And he says that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. He is manifest. He's manifest even in our struggles. When we gather together with somebody who's hurt us, God is there. When two or three come to give the witness, God is there. When the church is there, comes together for that third level of forgiveness, God is there. So may we never forget that we live in the love of God. Amen. Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus calls us to be a church that listens to and prays for the needs of the world. Let us place our petitions before him. For the Pope, the successor to St. Peter, that his deep relationship with Christ guides him as he leads the church in showing justice and mercy to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests who in the sacrament of reconciliation represent the whole church and God's love, offering the liberating gift of absolution of sins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for those who seek forgiveness, that they be open to the mercy of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, for those who suffer during these trying times, for those who are joining us in prayer, both remotely and in person, and for all the personal Mass intentions we bring before the Lord in the quiet of our hearts. We 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you empower each of us to proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ. Receive our prayers that with faith and courage we may follow in the way of Jesus to everlasting life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, Yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you endless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth and without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, Gregory, his assistant, all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, the martyrs and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Together we are all his hands and his feet. 
fallen, but we are forgiven, broken and scattered, yet being made whole by our Redeemer, one Lord and one Savior, the Shepherd who gathers us all. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.